Welcome to MegJC 101, a podcast about the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation and our contribution to building a resilient Jamaica. I'm your host, Dani Clark. Come, look at talk. In our recent episodes, we looked at the various sections and branches under the housing portfolio. So far, we have looked at the land administration section and the social services unit. In today's episode, we will continue by looking at the legal services unit. Very exciting. Our guest today is Assistant Attorney General in the Legal Services Unit, Ms. Patricia Ramsaran. So get ready as we will be learning all things legal. Stay tuned for an informative discussion. Let the numbers do the talking. Over the past two years, we have built over 160 houses, benefiting over 500 people in more than 48 constituencies through the new social housing program. You too can benefit. Simply visit your constituency office and fill out the application form. The Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation. Building hope. Building Jamaica. And we are back. Let us jump straight into it. Welcome to MegJC 101, Ms. Ramsaran. Thank you very much. So today, of course, as we told our, our listeners, we'll be talking about the Legal Services Unit. What, what is it that you do? Well, the Legal Services Unit for MegJC in a nutshell, provide general legal advice on all the portfolio areas that the ministry that is mandated to treat with. Um, we do opinions, we do briefs, we work with the various stakeholders regarding the legislative programs. You know, laws affect different aspects of people's lives and under our portfolio responsibilities, the ministry has um, responsibility for certain pieces of legislation, water legislation, land legislation, um, climate change legislation, environment legislation, just to, to name a few. So we would work with the stakeholders, you know, if there's any amendments to those legislation, we will offer the guidance and work with the stakeholders to get those legislation going through the legislative processes. So that's one aspect. Um, the other part of it is that one of the primary areas for MEGJC is that we do a lot of conveyancing work because the Minister of Housing is a corporation sole and the responsibility for the Minister of Housing rests and abides with MEGJC. And in a nutshell that, you know, over the years through the various iterations of the ministry, um, we would have developed schemes, we would have marketed schemes, we would have worked with developers to create housing solutions. The titles would have remained in the name of the minister or whatever it would have been called back then, you know, it would have changed over the years. And so we work with the developers. So once the schemes are done, whether internally or externally, with these partners, once the purchasers have gone through the process, you know, the marketing, the payment of their off, we would then seek to transfer the titles. Um, there are other things that we treat with internally, just like general legal advice or um, whichever of the stakeholders, the various um, units that are in the ministry, they may want to ask an opinion on a matter and we treat with that as well. So that's just in a nutshell, some of the things that we do. Okay, thank you. Um, I know that the legal services department, well, based on what you said, you guys play a very major role in this ministry, especially on the part of housing. And I know that you've had some wonderful, glorious days down here with some of our clients on the outside. And I'm going to get to that, you know, listeners. You want to hear the stories from Mr. Ramsaran. And by the way, the whole conveyance thing, we're going to get into that as well. So make sure that you're, you continue listening. Now, we have some other departments here, like the social services unit, land administration section that we, we dealt with them last in the last episode, and the technical services unit. How, do, how, how is it that you relate to these um, units? As I've said time and time again, everything that we do within the ministry starts and stops with legal. There is a legal basis for undertaking any project that we do, right? You know, we have the legislation and we have to make sure that we're not seen to be doing anything that will be contrary to it. So say like for social services, their primary role is the market. So let us start with PTSU, which is the technical services unit. They would work in conjunction with the land administration department to treat with the lands that the ministry has that are in the name of the Minister of Housing. And so when we're going to be doing a subdivision, 
those two units will work in tandem to ensure that the subdivision is done in accordance with that particular piece of legislation. The lots are properly marked out and once the, the subdivision is treated with and we have the plan, the plan is then pre-checked with the title's office. The plan comes to legal. Legal then will take the necessary steps to splinter the individual titles for those lots. Social services now come in at that part where the titles are being prepared. They would now enter into discussions with John Public to say, okay, we have this scheme going up. And from time to time, you see ads in the paper from NHD to say, you know, we have this area, we're inviting applications. The intake is done, and then you go through the process of selecting based on standard criteria. So that's social services. But at each step of this, the process from the time when we think, okay, we have a parcel of land, say, in St. Anne, we need housing in St. Anne, we do the necessary um, inspection, we do the thing, is it suitable for housing? Then the decision is taken, we get the, the necessary approvals, we then go to subdivide. Legal is given advice on each step of the game. So we are integral, you know, some may say at the back end, but I always remind, remind my colleagues, legal is crucial to from every, the from the start yeah. to the end. So we treat with land admin who keeps the land bank, we treat with technical services who would then go out and say, okay, we can treat with this and do this particular development. Then once we have the development going and the subdivision has been put in place and we have the necessary pre-check plans, and we can then go for the, to make the applications for titling, social services would step in and do the marketing. And then once the marketing process is done and we know have entered into agreements for sale. Persons are now supposed to pay according to the terms and conditions of the agreement for sale. Once they have concluding their end of the bargain, the, doc the file is sent to legal for titling. And then legal will prepare the requisite um, applications to transfer the lots that you have purchased from the minister to you, the purchaser. This is quite interesting stuff. I mean, I'm here in the ministry and while well, I know some of it, you know, a lot of this is just so exciting to me at this time. The amount of work that goes into this is not just about, you know, coming in. Hello, ma'am, I have a piece of land and what I'd like to buy. No, there's more that goes into it. No, this is what I'm sure everybody will want to hear. Titles. Talk to us about what titles the ministry hold and and outline the necessary documentation individuals will require when they are coming to the ministry for a transfer of title i want to know go to the bank and get some money but me need my title what are the documents okay if you're going to be purchasing a lot and you or you would have purchased a lot you'd have gone through the process with social services so at that point they would have asked you for simple things Give us a copy of your TRN. Give us a copy of your ID. And the government um, recognizes three forms of identification. Your driver's license, your passport, or your electoral ID. We have a challenge in this country, and we face it every day in legal, where pet names run. Everybody have a pet name. And they come and they put their agreement for sale in them pet name. And then when they come to title, now we're saying, okay, so Miss Danny Clark, that's your name, right? And you said, no, man, Danny, I'm a pet name, you know? So I'm like, so what is your right name? Really? Yes, man, you'd be surprised. I think I was telling um, a colleague, when I joined legal as a young attorney, I met a young lady. She was very pleasant. She started out in the 80s with Princess. She started her paperwork with Princess. And somewhere along the line, somebody told her in the 90s that her real name wasn't Princess, you know? It was Elizabeth and she came in, met with the attorney who was here at the time, did up the, you know, the requisite declaration to say, you know, I'm princess on this form, but I'm now have cause to be, to, and I verily do believe that my name is mm. Elizabeth. There were some challenges with getting the titles. Oh, there was a long delay. Let us, let us be frank. There's, as I said, life happens. So by the time she came to see me, she said her name was not Princess, neither was it Elizabeth. Huh? She was now Agatha. Wow. And she produced a birth certificate to say that she was Agatha. And we go to school in the pet names. Mm. We don't have birth certificates. Well, let, let us be real. A lot of Jamaicans still don't in 2023 have a copy of their birth certificate. The other issue we have is that sometimes people come and they're claiming their father's estate because that has passed. And they come and they say to us, oh, we want the thing. So we said, okay, did dad leave a will? No, he didn't. You then have to go to the courts to get what we call letters of administration. Mm -hmm. So the court will, will sanction you, Miss Clark, Miss Danny Clark, 
as the personal representative in the estate of your father. Then we come up on another thing. Your father's name don't appear by your birth paper. Oh. And so there is another challenge right mm. there. And and from time to time, more times often than not, we have people come in and I say, but is my father? I said, okay, how do you prove that? The, the easiest proof is to give me a birth certificate. But a lot of Jamaicans, unfortunately, their father's particulars are not on their birth certificate. Mm. And a lot of Jamaicans, unfortunately, still in 2023, do not have a birth certificate. So again, just remind our listeners what documents they need. Just remind them again, so you need your birth certificate, you need a TRN, you need an ID, and what else? If you're coming to purchase, Mm -hmm. you need to have standard documents. Mm -hmm. We also have the challenge with the names of the spellings, so we answer the birth certificate. So we've been working in tandem with social services to say, when you're marketing, these are standard documentation you would ask. We'll get your TRN, we'll get your ID, we get a copy of your birth certificate. If you are married, we need a copy of your marriage certificate. We're not going to insist that you put your title in the name of your married right. name if you don't want to do it because you are pay fit. We're not getting in, involved. But whatever it is that you are alleging that you are, we're asking you to give us the proof of it. If you've been divorced and your documentation is in your married name, you need to sort that out. Mm. Because if you if you're married if you're married and your 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 name is Ramsar and Thompson, mm. but you come and you tell me say you're divorced, where's the proof of that? Sure, to show that, to show that you think. Mm. If you are divorced, then you need to go to TRN office and have them amend your TRN to move it from the Ramsar and Thompson back to your maiden name mm-hmm. of Ramsar. And so for everything that you put out, we are, we're asking for, we will guide you as to what it is you need to do. Mm-hmm. Because remember, this is a legal process. Well, Miss Ramsaran, what a wealth of information. It seems as if we'll have to come back and speak with you in the next episode of the podcast because you have a lot to share with the public. So, listeners, in our upcoming episode, we'll explore the Legacy Project and dive more into the Legal Services Unit. Stay tuned now for our What's Happening segment. Rashida, what's happening? Welcome to What's Happening, straight out of the Meg JC, where we stay up to the time and make you know what's going on in the ministry. From the latest updates to the freshest initiatives, we're there for give Uno the scoop. So make you take a seat, kick back, and get ready for hear all the things that are going on in this segment of What's Happening. Rural Water Supply Limited is working to bring clean water to non-utility service areas in Jamaica, a key step towards the government's 2030 goal of universal water access. With approximately 15% of Jamaicans living in non-utility service areas, the Rural Water Supply Limited is prioritizing this initiative to improve the lives of rural residents. Rural Water Supply Limited is executing projects in multiple parishes, costing $135 million and benefiting around 5,000 residents. The Meg JC has launched an exciting new program called the Meg JC 360. This series highlights five dynamic portfolios and introduces the trailblazers propelling Jamaica's progress. Catch the program on the Ministry's YouTube channel at MEGJC underscore JM. That's MEGJC underscore JM. Water prohibition orders have been lifted due to the recent increase in rainfall. The Hermitage Dam is at 100% capacity and the Mona Reservoir is at 78.5%. However, Minister Samuda says restrictions remain in place, particularly for the Mona Reservoir, which must reach 80% capacity before they can be lifted. And finally, congratulations to the MegJC team on placing third in the front office decoration competition hosted by the Office of the Cabinet in commemoration of Service Excellence Month. To stay connected and updated about the latest happenings in the ministry, be sure to follow our social media pages on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at MEGJC underscore JM. And that concludes today's segment of What's Happening. See you next time.
Well, listeners, this has been MedJC 101. We so appreciate you for joining us today. And of course, we hope you've gained valuable insights into the legal services unit of the ministry. Now you have a title, you need to do some business with the ministry. Come on over, you have the information. Now you know exactly what it is that you need to take in with you to ensure that the process goes smoothly. So as usual, if you have any questions after listening to this episode or any other episode for that, matter of fact leave a comment below on our social media pages we will be sure to answer your questions in our next episode remember to follow like share and subscribe on twitter facebook instagram and youtube at medjc underscore jm as we bid adieu for now i'm your host danny clark on behalf of our communications team what good